as, as players when you first met? Well, you know, Guns N' Roses is uh, a pretty influential band for me. And before things happened in Seattle for us, we had a handful of kind of musical heroes, you know. So, you know, Duff was one of our local local boys done good. They were the first Seattle band, kind of contrary to popular now mythology, but Alice was the first band to like, get the deal, have a record that came out and made a, a huge impact. And, like, I kept in touch with... I moved to LA in like 84, but I, I was like on the sub pop singles club and I would go back to Seattle when I could. And I knew that this music scene was great in Seattle. I didn't leave Seattle because the music scene wasn't good. I left because of drugs. <laughs> Look where I ended up. But um, <laughs> anyhow, but so I was really like super proud. I'd heard about them live and then when I saw them the first time, and then we became fast friends. I mean, they were at my house that night. I remember so, seeing you guys, coming to see you guys at the at the Key Arena, and like bringing the demo tape down. And I gave it to Axel actually. Didn't yeah. you find it later? Like, no, no, he was he threw it away as he walked. Oh, walked as away. he walked yeah. away. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Their, their story is, is a book. That I, that's my type of story. You should write it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How would you tell the Alice story? Well, I mean, I've seen it, and I, you know, I've, I've been on the sidelines. Like, I'm not in the band, well, you know. You, but you kinda, I, I, I played a couple gigs, with them. but I'm I'm such good friends with them, and I know them so well, and know their music so well, and actually know it so well. Like, I I did learn 27 songs. You jammed with us when we first got to going again. You kind of helped us kind of get our thing going. He was the fifth yeah. Beatle. But uh, it's it's like a, it's like a great it's like a, one of those old Greek stories that I love like the the, the, the victory story and, and overcoming it, there's all of that and that's, uh, life. that's yeah. life that's life but it's kind of personified to me it's like a, it's personified with this band like I get to identify it that's what I mean right there just fucking watch those guys and it's beautiful yeah. to see William sort of be this giant lion of of energy sort of joining you guys which is such an incredible live outfit yeah. and him bringing this whole new life to the band like. yeah well you know we, 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 we all work together to make that happen and William's become a you know an integral part of the team you know that's what it takes it takes four guys doing their doing their thing all together uh, to make a band work four or five guys whatever it is when did you first see William play with Alice in Chains? Soundwave when Alice in Chains uh, no yeah like the year that Nine Inch Nails year <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alice in Chains played and that was one of his beginning of when he first started playing with them wow. yeah, because I, I grew up with Alice in Chains yeah and Lane Staley and, is yeah. like dude he's Lane, Lane Staley, Staley. Yeah. <laughs> and when it just goes to show you that like good songs are always going to be good songs. Yeah. So they would play, and I'd hear these songs that I yeah. grew up listening to, yeah. and got chills. Yeah. And I was like, this is gonna, he, this is gonna be fine. It's this true, is isn't it? Yeah. You know what I was thinking about? It's like Lane always has this really kind of incredibly deep emotional timbre. Like he could go so many different places and yeah. take you so many places. Yeah. And the thing with William is he can too. Yeah. And William's just a true artist who loves singing. Yeah. And just is so appreciative to be up there that that has a different, en a new energy. Just totally. that's like it's amazing. I <laughs> noticed like with this, these guys, nothing ever comes easy. They work hard for every new step, new chapter, whatever the new record. Um, William coming in. It's not like just, hey, he works great. It was a lot of work, you know, and they, but they're not afraid to work hard. It's kind of the cool, it's kind of like the, you know, we're in bands and we, we know how it, we know how it rolls. I mean, to the point where somebody actually pays attention to you uh, and kind of discovers you, there's been like, you know, years and years of toil and work to get to that point. So, so it's like, you know, when you're discovered, you're you already... You broke overnight. Yeah, yeah you yeah. broke overnight. Well, no, it doesn't no, really exist. No, really, yeah. does it? no. no. Really. <laughs> no. We, like, Guns, we, we did break in, in like, two weeks. I, I saw it going down, but we had been a band for, like, working our ass off 24-7, yep. living together without a toilet for three and a half years. Yep. So we didn't break overnight, and we toured and toured and toured and toured, and nobody bought our record, you know, for the first year, and then we released... Uh, uh, no, that record nobody bought until Sweet Child came out. And then right. suddenly we were playing, there were seven people, you know, and the next night there were 17, yeah. which was like a big, and the next night there was 70, and then, you know, next night there was yeah. 700, and then... And your song was Man in the Box. Yeah, the same thing. We put our record out, we toured for, God, six months, and we sold maybe, maybe 40,000 records. Maybe. 
And yeah. then it's not yeah. like forty thousand records now. Yeah, and it, then, yeah, so. yeah, and, and uh, you know that's we were we were on tour with we were on a full-on metal tour. We were opening up for Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax on the Clash of the Titans. And nobody knew who the hell we were, especially not Slayer fans and Megadeth fans. The Clash of the Titans tour in 90, late 90, no, 92, it was mid-92. And just the fact that you had, you know, three of the greatest metal bands ever, you know, Slayer, Anthrax, and Megadeth. And then here was this unknown band called Alice in Chains that nobody had ever heard of at the time. You know, I was maybe a ha like one of 20 people in the audience that actually was into it. Cause I mean, it was so vastly different. But to be there kind of on that, like right on that moment when that whole genre of music broke, I was so stoked, you know, because then when they got huge, I was like, man, I was, I was one of those guys. I remember seeing them in 92 and they were amazing. That's when Man in the Box yeah. hit, and like he yeah. said, was Sweet Child of Mine. When that song hits, you see everything turn on its head. Yeah. It was pretty cool to, to live through that, seeing that, you know, and uh, have that be part of, your, part of your history and have that sort of a, that sort of a moment, you know? Yeah. You never forget that. How did you meet, how did you meet Lane? Uh, we met at a party somewhere in West Seattle, I think, and uh, yeah, my mother had just passed and I kind of didn't really have a place to stay. I was kind of like homeless and uh, <clears throat> Lane, uh, Lane had a job at a uh, place called the Music Bank, which was a rehearsal. Uh, it was like, a place in Fremont? Yeah, yeah, it was right under the bridge in Ballard. I heard about it. <laughs> like, really? He was already gone by then, but, but uh, it was uh, 50 rooms, 24 hours a day. Uh, rehearsal. rehearsal room. So it was like always a party going on. There was always somebody doing something or a band playing. And uh, he invited me to invited me to come down and you know cr I could crash crash in the, his rehearsal room and I got a job there so we both worked there and uh, as we started playing you know sort of jamming with each other uh, we we both kind of paid for our room by by just kind of we weren't really working you just open your open uh, doors for other bands when they bring their gear in or want to jam that was that was it <laughs> and we got free rent and some frozen dinners for that <laughs> yeah. yeah it was good. A little food now and then, yeah. place to jam. Yeah, it's good. What was it like when Alice in Chains first broke through, being the first Seattle band to really? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it was uh, you know things that, things that were already kind of in motion, and, and uh, I think uh, you know I think credit needs to be given to probably probably Soundgarden yeah. first. They they kind of were like the kind of the fountain fountainhead of the of the movement. I think they'd been around a long time, yeah. and uh, they were signed first. To a &M. Mother Love Bone was the second band signed on Polygram. We were the third band signed on on Columbia, and uh, so Soundgarden had to put a record out, and Mother Love Bone had put in a record out. But their lead singer Andy had passed right at the time that their record came out, uh, and then ours ours was actually the third record to come out. Uh, but that summer when it came out, Man in the Box hit, so that was kind of like we were kind of the first band to kind of. Get that kind of kind of mass appeal, yeah. um, and then and then dominoes just started falling. You know, everybody started really, uh, everybody became really interested in the area. And obviously, there's a lot of great. There was a lot of great bands, and, and uh, another really great thing about our city is it's always been a really kind of uh, it's been kind of an, a supportive supportive town of each other. We were we were all uh, we were all pretty proud of each other. Uh, I heard Chris Cornell say it great. They were just making music. We were all just making music that we liked and we hoped our friends liked. That's it.